John, thank you very much for sitting down with us at Ibrox this morning. Rangers against Real Madrid, what does that fixture mean to you? Uh, good and bad memories. Uh, good in as much that Real Madrid were a world, world class, world class, one of the best club sides that ever played. In fact, the, the record proves it. I think they won something like five European Championships in the trot. Uh, and uh, they've always been a magic name in my head, except uh, I was lucky enough to get a ticket for the, the game at Hamden when they played Eintracht Frankfurt and they demolished them, I think it was 7-3. And I walked out of Hamden that day thinking to myself, as a young boy, I thought, that's some football team, that. And it just proves how hard you've got to work to get anywhere near the standards that they have. Uh, little did I know that three years later, I'd be playing against them. Um, and uh, the first game we see at Ibrox, uh, my job was to mark Puskas. Uh, about three minutes to go, and Hento, the left winger, he could catch pigeons, he was that quick. He went by Bobby Shearer as if he wasn't there. So I went out to cut him off, he slipped the ball inside, and Puskas scored. So we felt we felt were a wee bit unlucky to lose 1 0, losing a late goal like that. But we certainly weren't unlucky a fortnight later when we, we played in Madrid and we got hammered 6 0. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, it's, it's one of the few games that I've been dying for the final whistle to go <coughs> just after half time. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, in that game especially, it was a bit surprising because Scott Simon, the manager, had left three of our most experienced players out. And I would have thought it may have been better to play the experienced players in a game like that. But in leaving out Jimmy Miller, Ralphie Brand and Davy Wilson, they, if you look up the, the records and see how many goals they've scored, they, that was a big dent in our team as far as scoring goals were concerned. Although they were replaced by Jim Forrest, we went on to score like more goals in his, his career, uh, and Alec Willoughby and Craig Watson. But um, that was the biggest defeat I had, uh, and especially with, uh, with that team, I, I couldn't believe it. Although they were ageing, they were ageing by that time, I still believe that uh, Hento, the left winger, Puskas and De Stefano were three of the, the greatest players I'd ever seen, even up until now. Uh, and I got a, a pleasant surprise when a number of years ago there, I was, the club asked me to go back to M Monaco to pick up a presentation from UEFA. And to my surprise, who presented me with the trophy was uh, De Stefano. Uh, and quite honestly, that was the closest I'd got to him in <laughs> 180 minutes of football. Uh, and, and surprisingly enough, he wasn't limping because uh, I got a reputation of tackling him. But he, he, he was fine. He was, he, he was, he was, I don't suppose he remembered that first game, uh, the 6 nothing game. But um, what a fabulous, fabulous player. And there's still, they're still a very, there's still a bit of magic in their name nowadays. Uh, I know that Barcelona took over a little bit, but there's still a, a lot of magic in the name Real Madrid. Now, when you think back to 1963, when Rangers were drawn against Real Madrid, now you said you were at the game at Hamden a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. how, well, how did you feel going into that game? Were you excited? Were you nervous? Oh, well, I think I think it's fair to say uh, you're stretching my imagination a wee bit now, going that far back. But uh, I think it was. Very exciting because we knew, I think we all knew, uh, the enormous task that was in front of us. Uh, they didn't only come with the way they played in the, the pitch, they came with a reputation. Uh, and whereas you maybe looked at one team and says, well, if you stop him playing, you'll stop the, them for playing. But you looked at their team, you thought, even Santa Maria, the centre half, was a magnificent football player. Uh, so we knew it was going to be a, a, a difficult one, but I still feel it was something you've got. You've got up there on your your, your record that you can say, "Well, I played against Real Madrid." Uh, I suppose nowadays it'd be like saying, "Well, I, I played against Messi at Barcelona," but uh, it was all. It, I always looked upon it as a magic, a magic thing, because they were the big team. Uh, it goes even further back than that. In the, early, in the middle fifties, I'd, I'd watched Hungary play in England at Wembley. And they gave England an absolute doing, and it was Puskas that was orchestrating it all. So he went to Madrid as well, so he carried on that. And uh, 
even nowadays, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, Zidane's left because he was a, a, a modern, a nearly modern player as a manager now, but uh, he was somebody else that I admired a great deal. But um, it wouldn't matter, as I say, we played for them, they've got, they've, they've got some great players. Yeah, and Puskas back in the day scored here at Ibrox, scored yeah. a hat-trick in the, the Bernabeu. Just how good a player was he? Well, he was, he was very, very uh, deceptive and as much that he was quite chubby. If you would say chubby, but with all muscle. And he wasn't big, but his, his football brain was magnificent and he had a left foot in him. Uh, his left foot was, was absolutely magic and... Uh, he had a great sense of being in the right place at the right time in the penalty box. And nowadays we call them strikers. Uh, the strikers, good strikers, know where to go in the box. And he knew. I mean, he, I'd like to know how many goals he scored in his career. Having lost 1 0 in the first game at Ibrox, was there hope going over to the Bernabeu that you could overturn that? <laughs> yeah, I th well. I honestly believe, and it's maybe maybe people will laugh, but I've, I believe that playing for Rangers, you were capable of getting a result against anybody until you were proved wrong. Uh, and I, I, honestly, I can honestly say I never, went the, I never went in the pitch that night feeling that uh, we couldn't get a result. But it was probably a bigger surprise to the players when the team was announced what team was going to play. Because, as I say, some of the players were so inexperienced uh, uh, it, was, it was asking a lot. It was asking a lot for experienced players to play in that game, let alone inexperienced players. And we were we were a new team building up because um, uh, well, Eric Caldo had finished and Bobby Shearer was on his, his, his last couple of seasons. Uh, he, the rest of us, and Willie Henderson, Ronnie McKinnon and myself, were the, the backbone of the next team. And then Jim Forrest and that came in. But... Uh, uh, it, it brought back terrible memories when I think uh, I, I thought, how long? I wonder how long it is to go, uh, because they seem to score every time they the field. And the other thing about the game was you couldn't get a kick at the ball. You know, they just kept possession of the ball, and they talk about possession football. It, to them, it was like a practice match. They just kept passing the ball. <laughs> I mean, as long as they passed it back in their own half of the field, I was quite happy because they weren't going to score any more goals. But um, it was certainly an experience and one that lived me all my football playing career uh, because you don't get the opportunity to, to, to get uh, chances like that. That experience as a, a learning curve, because Rangers were very good domestically at the time, yeah. but did that maybe show you the level that you had to go up in Europe that then stood you in good stead for you know 67 in Munich and, or 67 in Nuremberg? And then yeah. Barcelona eventually, it kind of showed you where to go. Well, you have to you have to understand uh, that in those days the European scene was completely different from what it is today. You either played in the European Cup or you played in the Cup Winners Cup, uh, and I can't remember how many games we played to win the Cup Winners Cup in in uh, Barcelona, but you played you played home and away, but there was only about three or four rounds. So you played maybe a maximum eight, eight or ten games, but uh, nowadays it's far more difficult because of the first round, second round, third round sections. God knows what, and how many more. So uh, that, that, from that point of view, uh, the European scene has changed a lot. But uh, it was always, it was always to me very exciting to pit your wits against the Europeans because. The, 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 it was termed continental football uh, as opposed to playing your domestic football here. So you had to adjust your game a little bit uh, because these countries were all great at keeping the ball. They all, they all used to keep the ball and they were all good passes. Well, I mean, here you grew up, I think, a, a good full back in the early 60s with somebody that could kick the ball the length of the park. Over there was a good good fullback with somebody that could pull the ball down the air and pass the ball 30 yards by their foot and things like that. Uh, so the game the game had changed a fair bit. But um, definitely a big, big experience. And I mean, this game on Sunday, although it's not a, a European Cup game or a Cup winner's game, 
it's, uh, it's, it's great to play against these teams because you, you always gain that kind of experience. And our game's changed as well because our lads like to keep the ball. Our lads like to pass the ball about. So they'll get the opportunity to do that on Sunday, uh, whichever team that Stephen plays. Yeah, and Sunday very much kickstarts the 150th anniversary celebrations for, for Rangers as well. I mean, it's obviously been such a massive part of, of your life. Yeah. I mean, what, just what does it mean to you to have represented this club you know, over so many years and now to be going into this historic year? Well, I, I didn't think it would be about, or certainly about, uh, round about the club when the 150 years came up. But, uh, he, well, it, it, it's difficult for me to put it into words because, it, because I'm very proud, I feel very honoured that I've been allowed the opportunity to be here at this stage in the club's history, um, I think uh, the next year, the next year will be very, very important because it's good to look back and think. Well, it's good. we've got a good side just now, and they were great, and they did well last season, and hopefully we can do it this season. But this club is an institution, and there's been some great players and managers and people, chairman of the club going through over that 150 years you're talking about. Uh, and I, I think it, I think it'd be nice to just pause for a second during the next year and think back to some of the famous names that's walked through the door because they've all helped to making this club what it is. More so, no more, nobody more so than, than Stephen, uh, who, as I said to him a few weeks ago, winning the, winning the league here, the championship here after all these years, wasn't just great for winning the championship. I think what it did after the previous 10 years that we had in this club, it gave this club back a, a lot of respect, both at home, here and abroad. Uh, and I think that's important because uh, we, we are a big club and we had a, great, a good name in Europe. And hopefully this is us resurrecting it now.